Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, something's missing from our mining rig over here. And what's missing is this guy. This is a MSI Ventus 3080. This is the latest graphics card I purchased probably a month and a half ago. And after a month and a half, the thing has failed and it started to overheat. So I've noticed over the last couple of weeks, the temperature and the memory keeps getting hotter and hotter. So started initially when I was mining around like 98, which is as expected, and then started to go 100, 102, 104, 106. And before I knew it, it had hit the 110 and it was thermal throttling. So I've gone ahead and fixed that about two weeks ago, and it's been working really amazingly since. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and show you how I did that. Very quick fix. So let me flip over to the workbench and then I'll show you exactly what I did. Now that we have the GPU on the bench, we want to go ahead and separate the cooler from the board because we want to change the thermal paste that we have on the GPU chip itself, or I guess on the GPU die. And I use the Noctua NTH1. So I'll give you a link to all these in the video description. Plus, we want to change the thermal pad. So it's this kind of squishy material that helps cool down and helps conduct heat from the memory modules, memory chips over to the cooler. So we wanna change that with a high quality one. And again, I'll give you a link to where I got this on Amazon. So this is the one that I use and has been working amazing since. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna flip this GPU over. So just bear in mind you have these cables here. So just flip it over. And then we wanna go ahead and open up the majority of these screws on the back. All right, so let's go ahead and open up these screws. And I use just a regular Phillips screwdriver. Again, I'll give you a link to this in the video description. But just go ahead and open these up and then keep track of where each of these screws go because I believe they may be different, but we'll just double check that once we're done. But you just wanna open up all of these. And then I will leave this for the very end. And let me show you a picture of how this was performing before I made this update. And this is when the card was probably a month old. So it wasn't when it's had the issue um, of the overheating. I unfortunately didn't take any pictures of the overheating, but you can see that already in this picture is running at 102 degrees. And this is locked to 80% fan. And this is when it's performing properly. And if you compare this with the 3070 Ti, you can see the 3070 is running about 96. So that's kind of your gauge. So the 3070 Ti is untouched. So when we look at this afterwards, we'll kind of compare based on how the 3070 Ti is working and then also based on how it was working beforehand. But I can tell you right now, kind of spoiler alert, it's going to be a lot better because I was hitting about 84, 86 degrees on the memory. So huge uh, improvement. When you're doing this for the first time, you will notice that there is a sticker on here and that sticker, it doesn't say warranty void. The sticker actually says factory seal. So I think MSI recognizes that in some Maybe areas they can't void the warranty for something like this, whereas in other areas they can. Just bear in mind, once you do this change, not only can they easily tell because the sticker is gone, but also visually you'll see the different, um, the different thermal pads. Okay, so now we've got all those out. Let's get this one out. And I like to open this in the X pattern. So a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, because there's a lot of pressure on this mount. So I don't want to risk warping anything or damaging anything. So just go in the little X pattern. So a little bit here and then go back here. And then here. Then here. At some point, it will separate. Just keep some pressure on it. You don't want it to fling up. Just keep going. Yeah, so there you go. You see how it came up? There you go. I'm keeping a little bit of downward pressure on this as well. I don't want it to fly. Okay, so now we can take this out and then set that aside. 
So now we can go ahead and separate the two pieces. Again, bear in mind we have these wires here. So imagine you're folding it open. So just go ahead and grab it, give it a little bit of a wiggle. Okay, so there we go. So it took a little bit of kind of wiggling back and forth, a little bit of pressure, but it did open up. And you can already see here that we did change these thermal pads. These thermal pads are different than the stock ones. And let me show you a picture of how the stock ones look when I first did this, because they were so bad that I did take a picture. And you can see in this picture, you see how they're so shiny and oily. Also, when you look at the actual memory chips themselves, they're just really oily and shiny looking. That's not good. That means that they have failed. So I went ahead and changed it to this new type. Again, link in the video description, but it's very simple. You just go ahead and kind of place it over here. You try to see what the right size is. You cut, you remove both sides. So make sure you do remove both of these protective covers. So you remove both of these covers and then you clean everything up. So make sure you use some alcohol. You use that to clean everything up, place it back on, and then you're good to go. So now that I've opened this, I want to go ahead and just clean up the chip a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and reapply the thermal paste and close it back up. We have it all cleaned up now. We use some paper towel, Q-tips and the alcohol. So it's all clean here and there. And the one thing I didn't mention is the one pack of thermal pads is plenty. You'll actually end up with this much left over. And where we put the thermal pads is over here, here, here and here. In my mind, really, there was no benefit in changing these stock thermal pads. If you want to, you can go ahead and do so. But really, I think the majority of the heat's going to come through here anyway. And then when you're reassembling, just bear in mind that there are two little pieces over here. So this one and that one. So on mine, this one stayed on the board. This one stayed on the cooler. So just bear that in mind that you don't lose those two. So the final piece we want to do is we want to go ahead and apply our thermal uh, paste on the actual GPU itself. And I think it's going to take a lot. So I'm just going to go kind of like an X pattern. Well, that was too much, but like a little X pattern here, kind of like this. Because what you'll notice is when you first take this apart, there's a lot of thermal paste on there. It's kind of oozing out the side. And you saw my application there wasn't that much coming out and I put about this much myself anyway. It's going to move a bit more to the middle here, but I think that should be plenty. So I'd rather have a little bit more than a little bit less. So now that you have that on there, the last piece is just to realign them and put them back together. And then you notice that we never took these off, which actually, as long as you have the space to kind of fold them open like this, there's no need. So now all you have to do is refold it back on itself. So we have that, that's good, that's good, that's good. These two are there. So just go ahead and refold it over itself. And what I like to do is bring it close to me so I can keep an eye on these screw holes. So I may go off camera for a second. I wanna keep an eye on the screw holes, make sure they're coming down straight. Yeah, there we go. And then we can go ahead and reinstall all of the screws. So I think I had it in this kind of orientation, but again, I think the screws are all the same. Actually, no, they're not the same. These two are different. So these two screws are different than these ones. So make sure you do have it in the right orientation. So all I'm going to do is get these screws started. I'm not going to fully tighten them. I'm just going to get them going just to make sure that we're all aligned and then I'll come back. Okay, so I got all these screws put in place. Again, very, very lightly tightened. If anything, they're not even tightened. So check this out. If I go like this, you see how it wiggles? So I just use these to align the board, make sure things are in the right place. Because what I like to do is I like to put this main clamp on first. So I just line up the clamp and then get one corner started. So give it a couple of turns and then stop, go to the next corner and then you gotta push down quite a bit, get it going a couple of turns, and then next corner, again, push down quite a bit, a couple of turns, 
Next corner, push down, a couple of turns. And then make sure that you got this properly centered. You don't wanna squish any of these components. So now just tighten all the way in the X pattern. So a couple of turns here. Then we go here, a couple of turns there. Let me go here, a couple of turns. Come here, a couple of turns. And some of you actually in our other videos on GPUs asked where I got these screwdrivers from. So these are all from Amazon and I've got links to Amazon where you can purchase everything in this video. The thermal pads, the screwdriver, the thermal paste, all of those are from Amazon. So if you do need them, then use our links, please. Definitely appreciate it. Okay, so that's tight now. This one is tight as well. Again, you can see just finger tight, nothing too crazy. There's already a lot of clamping force on this. So just finger tight, tight. This one is tight as well. Tight and tight. So now that I have that one closed, I'll go ahead and just tighten up all the other screws. All right, and there you go. So let me go ahead and reinstall this into the mining computer and then we'll see how the results were. And the one thing you'll notice is I did not bother replacing the thermal pads on the back plate. I just don't think that they do that much in the first place. If, if you really want to, you can go ahead and take off the couple of other screws once you open the two boards and change those out as well. Again, I don't think you'll see much of a benefit for the cost because really the ones on the memory chips themselves do the majority of the cooling anyway. All right, so let me install this. I'll be back. All right, and we're back up and running. You can see we're mining Ravencoin and we've been mining for almost 40 minutes. I wanted to give plenty of time for the temperatures to stabilize. And as you can see, they have and we can see our 3080 from MSI. It's working and has been working for a while now, which is a good sign that we didn't mess anything up. Temperature wise, we're at 58 degrees core, which doesn't really matter as much for mining, but 84, that's a magic number. So we can see that our temperatures went from 110 degrees on the memory down to 84. So that to me is, is exactly what we were looking for. And this is how it should have come from the factory to begin with. And our 3070 Ti, which was our kind of control graphics card, you can see that it's still running at 96 degrees. So we're in very similar kind of um, ambient temperatures. So I hope that this video does help some of you out there who have similar kinds of issues on your MSI 3080. So big disappointment that I had to do something like this with the 3080, especially after a month and a half. I've got other graphics cards here that have been mining for over a year without kind of the, these sort of issues. So disappointing, but at least we were able to get it to resolve with a couple of dollars and a couple of minutes of time. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.